Good morning, children of the Most High God, Swansea SDA Church. As you know, my name is Damson Chola. I'm here in the United States and standing at Cleburne First Seventh day Adventist Church. I am so glad that I'm standing before you right now. But I want to say my condolences to you, children of God, for the loss of our beloved pastor, Lozzie. He is the pastor that approved my name to speak to you. At the time when Sister Hachuma contacted me, I'm so sad to hear that we lost our beloved pastor who has left his family behind. And Pastor Giovanni, if that's the best and the right pronunciation, thank you so much for picking up the slack and for allowing me to stand before you, children of God, and speak to you what the Lord has got for you. At every point in time, comes a moment to make a choice in one's life. And what we decide is what fixes our destiny. We are what we are right now because of the choices that we have made in the past. And so time has run and here we are. The choice that we are going to make at the end of this message is going to fix and determine our destiny. We are living in very difficult times right now. Times that are so hard to navigate, to get around, to do things. Because what has happened to this world has never happened since there was a creation of this world as far as I can remember. A pandemic has struck us which has brought the entire world to a standstill. I remember at one moment the entire world shut down. The year 2020 was not pretty. Neither is the year 2021. What struck us has kept some of the most powerful leaders in this world scratching their heads. What has happened right now has caused even the person that does not believe in God to rethink his position. What is going on right now has caused even the Christians who were not serious with God to be on their knees a lot of times. This pandemic has brought tragedy and right now we are mourning Pastor Lozzi. I know so many of you have lost to this. So many of us have suffered to this. And that brought me to the consideration of what we are going to talk about this day. When the Lord asked me to consider a message I chose the title of persistence. And the reason why I chose the title of persistence, it has everything to do with everything that we have gone through and things we are going through right now. 
And this was at a time when Jesus was trying to tell a parable to his disciples. About a woman that was persistent. She was a widow and without children. And Jesus was telling his disciples in this story to say we have to pray and not to cease. And therefore, our discussion and reflection is going to be in the book of Luke chapter 18, verse 2 to 18. Luke chapter 18, verse 2 to 18. And I'm going to have my son, preference, read the text. In a certain town, there was a judge who neither feared God nor respected people. And there was a widow in that same town who kept coming to him and pleading for her rights, saying, Help me against my opponent. For a long time, the judge refused to act. But at last, he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or respect people, yet because of all the trouble this widow is giving me, I will see to it that she gets her rights. If I don't, she will keep on coming and will finally wear me out. And the Lord continued, listen to what the corrupt judge said. Now, Will God not judge in favor of his own people who cry to him day and night for help? Will he be slow to help them? I tell you, he will judge in their favor and do it quickly. But will the Son of Man find faith on earth when he comes? Thank you so much, son. Here we see Jesus standing in front of his disciples. And he wants to prepare them for what is to come right ahead of them. Because he understood and he knew that his day is coming and coming very soon. He had already spoken to them of what his day is going to be. He had already told them to say, Look, when my day comes... It will not be in secret. It is going to be in public. And as the lightning is going to light up the entire sky, from one end to the other, that is how my coming is going to be. And so never be deceived by anybody if they tell you to say he is coming and he has come is in a certain chamber. Do not go there. He has come and he is in the mountains. Do not go there. He has come and he is somewhere in the desert. Do not go there. Jesus started preparing his disciples. He had already told them to say, well, before the kingdom of the king comes, the days are going to be like the days of Noah. Before the day of the king comes, the days are going to be like in those days of Loti. So stay awake and watch and see and pay attention to whatever is going on because his day is coming. The kingdom of God is upon us. Now, before he told the story of this widow, The Pharisees came to him and interrupted him in the midst of him trying to address his disciples because he's trying to prepare them for what is to come. And they said and asked him a question to say, when is this, con this kingdom going to come anyway? Because according to their own thinking, according to their own minds, they were more smarter than Jesus. And what he was talking about seemed to be strange to them. And so they asked, when is this kingdom of God coming? Jesus paused as he was talking to his disciples. And he turned around 
and he gave them an answer. After giving them an answer, he did not waste time spending with them because there was no need. And he turned to his disciples because he knew what was going to come was harder, harder, and harder. And he knew that the times they are going to pass through before the door of the Lord comes, he's going to be more difficult for them. And so he started preparing them to make sure they are able to understand the times that are coming and that they are to be persistent in prayer and not to stop. And him being the master teacher, he brings about an object lesson. He brings about a story of a widow. And that's the story that is recorded in Luke chapter 18, verse 2, and going down to verse 8. And he started speaking to them and said, In the city was a judge. And this judge did not fear God nor regard any man. In the same city was a woman. This woman was a widow. Her husband had died. She was left by herself. But she was going to this judge who did not fear God nor regard any man for her plea to be handled. And the Bible speaks to say when she was going to this judge she was not admitted. At every time and every point when she was told to go in and, she, and, the, the, and the judge sees that it was this woman that has come in, he just says, can you turn around and go back? Dear children, in the ancient oriental society, if you read SDA Bible Commentary, Volume 5, you will read, they're going to tell you to say, in those days, if there was the most hopeless person in society, it was a widow. Especially if she doesn't even have kids especially sons that can stand up for her own rights. She was the most horrible and the most miserable person there was in that society. And now in those ancient days, even women standing up in front of men and to speak, it was not acceptable. And now she was not just a woman, but a widow. And at this time, Jesus says, she had nothing that was left to rely on except on the judge's sense of justice and mercy. This woman knew and understood very well that she was insignificant in the eyes of this judge. She did not expect anybody to pay attention to her when she is speaking in society. She understood very well that even her problems were none of anybody's concern. She realized very well to say her position in that society was of a nobody. And nothing she can do Unfortunately, the husband she realized on, the husband she depended on, the husband who was her companion, the husband who was her helper, the husband who was her everything, died and she was left alone. That probably came a time, maybe, her husband had left some property. 
behind with other people. And now according to the law, especially with the land, after a certain period of time, there is jubilee. After a certain period of time, land can be repossessed. Even if you bought it from somebody or you got it from somebody, you have to return it when that time comes because of the law. And in the Bible, the Bible clearly speaks that the Lord spoke to his people that the land is his. Now because she was a widow, and because probably she had no kids, no one to stand up for her, no one to speak on her behalf, no one to listen to her. When she goes to those people that were left with property by her husband, none was willing to give back what belonged to her. No one was willing to let go of anything that, was, that belonged to her. And because she's a woman, her voice was not significant. Because she was a woman, her presence was equal to nothing. Because she was a woman, she had nothing in life. And now, Christ speaks that this woman was not just a woman. She was a widow. And now Jesus says, in the city was a judge. And he didn't mention the kind of judge that it was. Because he knew how much the Pharisees and the scribes had taken advantage of the widows. He did not want to mention anything just in case they know who he is talking about. He just says in the city was a judge, and this judge did not fear God nor regard any man. And in that same city is a woman, and this woman was a widow who had no one on her side. And so she rises up to go to the judge and plead her case so that this judge can judge against her adversaries. Unfortunately, the judge did not admit this woman at the time when she wanted to be admitted. Meanwhile, her adversaries were hanging on to her own stuff, hanging on to her own things, hanging on to the things that she depended on. Have you ever felt helpless in your own situation in this life? Have you ever experienced a time when you feel hopeless and out of control of your situation? As a husband, has there been a time in your life when you have felt to be a stranger in your own home. As a wife, has there ever been a time when you have ever felt to be a stranger in your own home? Even when the word love from your husband to tell you that he loves you does not even make any sense. Simply because what he is doing and what he is saying is different. And you are feeling so much out of control, like you are losing out. Have you ever felt like your children are slipping off of your hands and you can't do anything about it? Is there any time when we have felt like something is really happening here and you have no control? The story goes, this woman had nobody, and she felt helpless. She didn't know what to do, and her adversaries were hanging on to the things that belonged 
to her. What is it, my dear sister, that the devil is trying to grab away from you? What is it, my brother, that you do have and you count so precious that the devil is trying to grab away from you? Is it your children that the devil is trying to take away from you? Is it your own home that the devil is trying to take away from you? Is it your wife that the devil is trying to grab away from you? Is it your husband that the devil is trying to grab away from you? Is it your job that the devil is trying to grab away from you? Is your son sleeping away and you feel you have no control because this devil is hanging on to what you hold treasure and so dear? In the city was a judge, a judge that feared not God nor regarded any man. And Jesus speaks and says, this widow decided to go to the judge. The very judge that was wicked and did not fear God. The very judge that never cared about man. My question is, when your situation is so tough, and you feel out of control. Where do you go? Your new disease has fastened so much on you. And it has become so much of a burden. Where do you go? When your marriage is trembling and trading on the rocks and you're scared of losing it where do you go in this situation Jesus explains to his disciples that this judge to whom the woman decided to go is a man that does not fear God nor regard any man but the woman makes a choice to only go to the only person she thought would judge her case. How horrible is that? That this man happens to be the judge that cares about nobody but himself. Oh yes, she decided to go to him. But the Bible says in verse 4, each time she went in, he just said, out of here. She sent away in the morning, she goes back in the evening. She sent away in the evening, she goes back in the morning. She sent back in the morning, she goes back in the evening. She just keeps on coming and coming and coming and coming. She understood that she had to continue to do it. And how would you call that? No wonder why most scholars have entitled this story as a story of a persistent widow. Because she understood her position and her situation. She knew that she had to be persistent. Now, what is persistence? I tried to ask Google. I said, Google, can you tell me similar words of persistence? And Google said, yes, I can. And I said, I am listening. And he says, persistence is the same as perseverance, determination, 
staying in power, being patient, endurance, diligence, dedication, commitment, steadfast, stamina, and firmness of purpose. Whoa. Firmness of purpose. This woman knew her situation and she knew that she had to be persistent. Because the king she is going to or the judge she is going to is a man that regards no man, no fears God. She knew she had to persist and withstand rejection. She knew she had to be patient regardless how many times she was sent away. She knew she had to stay focused and stay firm on the purpose that she had because there was no one in that land who was going to be the one to preside over her case and judge her case. Most of us, we give up in every situation of our lives simply because sometime, somewhere, the purpose was lost. A lot of times, we give up because the sense of purpose is gone. The Bible says this woman was persistent. Verse 4 and verse 5. As she continued to go to this judge who did not fear God nor regard any man. The judge said, this is just too much. I am just getting weary of this woman coming to me every time. And now in verse 4, and going to verse 5, the Bible clearly speaks that the judge decided at this time to hear her case. Persistence my dear children of God, is defined as a firm continuancy in course of action in spite of difficulty or opposition. She knew exactly what her position was in society. Everything negative was right there in her face. Everybody looking at her was not in support of her. But she stayed persistent. In spite of the opposition and in spite of the difficulties. How often do we stay persistent in the face of opposition? How often do we stay persistent when we are facing several difficulties in our lives? How often do we decide to stay persistent even when things are not going our way? The Bible says, regardless whatever was going on, this woman persisted and continued to go to this judge until this judge said, no! Not anymore. Bring her in and I will judge her case. And he judged her case in her favor. And he said, I don't want her to continue to weary me. Oh, children of God. Persistence creates a way where there is no way. Persistence makes a hole in a concrete wall that the devil has put in your life. Persistence 
makes things different and changes the hearts of the ungodly. Oh yes, this woman was persistent because she knew that it was only this king, only this judge, who was going to judge her case. She did not give up in any way. She decided to stay constant. She decided to be there even when she was rejected. My question is, what situation are you passing through? Which is making you weary? What situation are you confounded with? Which is making you so weary? Are you going to give up? Because the answer is not coming. Are you going to give up? Because the solution is not coming. Persistence is being able to continue even when you know there is danger. Persistence is being able to continue even when you know it's not going to be pleasant. Persistence is being able to continue even when you feel like giving up. The Bible says in verse 6, Jesus speaks to his disciples and he says, listen to what the unjust judge says. He said he is going to respond and judge her case. Can you listen to what this unjust judge said? The unjust judge who was equivalent to the devil himself. The unjust judge who never cared about man. He is the one that says, because she keeps on coming to me, I am going to judge her case. Verse 8. If that unjust judge can say those words, will not God bring justice to his chosen ones? Who cry to him day and night. Will he keep them waiting? My dear brothers and sisters. I don't know what situation you are going through right now. My dear mother and my father. I really have no idea what situation you are going through right now. But here is the voice of the Lord. Listen to what the unjust judge said. Do you think your God, the faithful judge, the righteous judge, the creator of the universe, the one who made you, the one who created you, the one who cares about you, is going to continue to put you off? The answer is no. The Bible says he is going to reward you speedily. And he is not going to waste time. Stay on. Even if your situation is so rocky. Stay on. Even, your marriage, even if your marriage is so bumpy, stay on. Even when the situation is looking to be impossible, stay on. Even when your disease has fastened on you, stay on. Because the judge that is before you is a God that cares. And the judge that is before you is the God that is righteous. The judge that is before you is the God that created you. The judge that is before you is the God that rules the universe. And he is going to write the last line of this world's history. He says... 
He is going to respond to you speedily. And he is not going to waste any time. And so Jesus says, be persistent and continue to ask and the Lord is going to reward you. I like the statement that is indicated in verse 8. I tell you, you will see that they get justice and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Jesus has told the entire story. Now he comes to the conclusion after he has told his disciples to say, the times that are coming are so difficult. And unless you become persistent in prayer, you are not going to withstand the test of time. Now he has told them everything that they have to continue to pray without ceasing. And now, he makes a conclusion and he says, the question that I have for you, my disciples, when the Lord comes, is he going to find faith on the earth? My question to you, my dear brothers and sisters, is, when the Lord comes, is he going to find faith in you? You cannot be persistent if you do not have the faith. You cannot be persistent if the Holy Spirit does not dwell in your heart. Because there is nothing that is going to be resolved or be prepared or be moved forward except the Holy Spirit drives in you. It is the Holy Spirit that gives you persistence. It is the hope that you have in the Lord that gives you persistence. It is the trust that you have in the Lord that will give you persistence. It is the acceptance of your situation and you know what it is. That gives you persistence. It is the realization and being aware of where you are standing and knowing that your judge is a merciful God. My dear children of God, the Lord is coming sooner than we think. But the question is, is he going to find faith on the earth? Yes, there's so many things that have befallen you. Yes, so many things that have happened. Yes, so many things that are discouraging in your life. But let me tell you this. Be patient and stay persistent because the Lord is on your side. The judge you have is a judge who is God. The judge you do have is a judge that cares. The judge that you do have is the one that has his thoughts over you, only thoughts of peace and thoughts to give you the expected end. Jesus says, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about its own self. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Just seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 says, Do not worry about anything. But in every situation, make your request known to God by prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. Do not be scared of your situation because that will be your own understanding. But trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean 
on your own understanding. Don't be scared. Step out. Because God is with you. Yes. You may worry and fear. But let me tell you, in my closing, fear will imprison you while as faith is going to liberate you. Fear will jeopardize you, but faith is going to empower you. Fear will discourage you, but faith will encourage you. Fear will make you paralyzed, but faith will give you resistance. I hope today your learning, your understanding of this parable is to stay persistent for the Lord is with you and on your side. He's coming sooner than we think. The question is, is he going to find you persistent when he returns? The question is, is he going to find faith in you when he returns? My desire is that the Lord dwells in me and gives me persistence. My desire is that when he returns, he finds faith in me. May the Lord bless you and may the Lord bless you and keep you. In Jesus' name, amen.